Good morning, Burgess. Good morning, Crap. <laughs> Are you fired up and ready to go? Oh, I am ready to go. <laughs> this is classic Crawford style. It looks like you're very organized. Of course. <laughs> Just like a week ago. I'm going to look up my pillow. Jasmine. Are you excited about this or it what? 6 a.m. people. 6 a.m. <laughs> and we own that big boy right there. <laughs> what do you think it's going to be like there in Alabama? I don't know. That tornado would have gone a half a mile further to the west where it came through. Do you see that in the place we were? Do you see the path on that map? Or did you look at that map? Yeah, I looked at that map. All right, a half a mile west in a university, all those dormitories, they were in school. Who knows how bad they would have been wiped out because yeah, really. it was an F4. I mean, so yeah. there's a good chance there would have been who even knows how many lives because the Julia Tutwater dorm holds like 2,000 girls in it. Just that building alone. And uh, so, I mean, they have a picture. Nick Saban's looking out his window, seeing this thing coming. He's asking his secretary. They got it on recording. He says, "Was this hitting us, or what do we need to do?" He, you know, he don't know. But it looks like it's coming right at him. But it was, he, it was just out of his window. He can see it coming, and they're trying to figure out what the heck to do. You know, you got this moment to oh, make yeah. that decision. Uh, seconds or whatever. Take two. We have arrived. At According to people in the area, there's over 100 to 300 migrant workers that were never accounted for that were lost in these caves where they lived. You can see like a little makeshift hut down in here. Oh, there's the car. Check out the car just stuck in the side of the road. Hi, we're standing outside of Soma Church with Riz, a resident of Tuscaloosa and also a professor at the University of Alabama in business. And Riz, can you just tell us a little bit about how the community has been affected and what your part has been in helping us, helping the community recover? Okay, well, uh, you know, the, basically a quarter of the city was uh, destroyed as a result of this massive tornado, which uh, had a 5.9 mile path through uh, the residential areas of the city. And uh, about 21,000 homes in total were um, affected in some fashion, of which about 3,000 were total loss day one. Uh, about 4,000 were very severely damaged, had some kind of structural damage, uh, as well as uh, we had a loss of about 50 people, uh, lives were lost, uh, as well as uh, in excess of uh, 800 people that were severely injured.
So Dana lives is going to live in this new house that uh, Bree and Al and Stud have been working on all day. Tell us a little bit on um, what it was like when you heard the tornado was coming in and so forth. DC Jess Bree, tell us a little bit about your day. Seen a lot of books. Today we're on books. Books. What kind of books? All kinds of books. Elementary, middle school, high school, children's books, teacher books. And how did these books get here? They were donated by a lot of people from our own Sorting out elementary? Children's. Children's book, library. Yeah. Middle school, high school, right, Take Danny? Home. Take home. Here, Josh and Caleb. Teach a lot of books. Hey, you got books. Too you many said. books. Any Say that again, Jazz. Books. Take out. Too many books. Is there To help people who can't get supplies, school supplies, because of tornado. Cause of tornado. Mm. I don't think you could be prepared because I think you, we all, from anywhere except Tuscaloosa, think this accident, this tragedy happened six months ago. There's no way that the devastation could still be as strong as it was. And as we go through that first morning at 7.30 a.m. and all of a sudden, boom, you hit where that tornado started and it goes for over a mile and all you see is still homes destroyed, trees uprooted, businesses that have not even been touched with their windows completely blew out, debris still inside there that people have not touched at all, that made us understand that, holy cow, in our own United States of America, we have people that still have not got the help that they need because it's been such a wide, uh, wide mileage of devastation. Well, we are in Cottondale, Alabama, and this is our little house parsonage that we'll be staying in for five nights. We survived the first night, and as we walk through this little grassy area you can see once again there's the super RV that we drove in on last night rolled in at 1130 Michigan time this is our first destination day one day one everyone's got their sack lunches <laughs> thanks for the smile jazz <laughs> Project Blessing.org. We are entering the house that we have been fixing up. Hi, Coach Burgess. This is the porch area. This is the walkway down to the basement. We've done all the trim, all the paint in here, all the doors. We moved all this stuff in for the living room. We've done the paint and the trim in here as well. It's a really nice house. We've done all the flooring. Hi, Brian. Yo. We've done the kitchen. Coach Mock and the boys 
worked on the cabinets here. We did the trim and we painted. And some family is going to get to have this great house when they lost their house due to the tornadoes. Here's the bathroom. It'll be very exciting to see what this house looks like in a few months. This is Julianne. She's the young lady that has been helping us kind of organize and manage us while we've been at this house. Julianne, Julianne can you just kind of tell us some of the things maybe you saw the day that the tornado struck and where you were and what, what you know, obviously you witnessed and some of the stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. I was in Moundville, which is about 30 miles away from Tuscaloosa, and uh, my father called me and told me to stay in Moundville. I didn't listen to him. I drove on up. Uh, and about 30 miles from Tuscaloosa, you could see it come in. It was about the size of my fist. You could see the uh, power go off on the back side of it. After it went through, uh, we went in and we were the first people on the interstate. And it was just mass chaos. There was people walking around, uh, open wounds, people laying on the ground. Uh, the ambulances weren't there yet. Uh, we just tried to help as many people as we could get out of their vehicles and assess the situation, see who was worse off and who needed them ambulance first. Ambulance came up, so we just kind of triaged the people and walked up the hill to Rosedale and uh, started looking for people. My sisters were up from Enterprise in Pensacola and we were giving out food and supplies to people. I met Marsha at Taco Casa and she says, what are you doing? I says, I'm just trying to get equipment out to people. And she says, well, what do you need? And I said, I need gas cards. So she handed me $100 worth of gas cards and a business card and the next day I showed up with my truck and my trailer and I've been with them ever since. Marsha worked with uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. And there was a girl with um, a disability, and she wanted to be able to have people come to her house and enjoy the home home life. So they went in and they fixed up her house, and uh, she was able to have spend the night company after that. It grew from there. Uh, like I said, I haven't been with them too long, but uh, they have worked on at least 20 homes since the tornado, and. We're just trying to help people who own their own homes, refurbish them, re repair them from the damage and also just from normal wear and tear. Mm -hmm. Hey girls. How's the day going so far? It's a little hot. It's a little hot. <laughs> Other than that, it's awesome. Al. What have you been doing today, Steph? Kitchen. Who is your project manager on that? I don't know, but she wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been Mac. <laughs> she, I, she, no, she wasn't very good. Oh, Mac. <laughs> Bree, what have you been doing today? Trimming in the room over there. Definitely not working on your tan. Nope. <laughs> Just about to take that off. Joshy, what have you been doing? You don't Painting. know? Painting? Painting. V, what have you been doing? Supervising. Mark? I took a nap for a while. Did you? <laughs> there honey. Peyton. That's very nice of you. That's a pretty green. Go ahead, go ahead. Let me see them let me see the muscles. Dang twin, you got some muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Get some. I think we'll have four bedrooms when we're finished with it. It'll provide a nice home for somebody to come into and not have to do a lot of work. This is the porch. We're cleaning up after a long But I think the biggest thing was to watch us all work so hard, um, sweat so much, and be able to see different strengths that we might have that we might not have known until we left Grand Valley's campus that day and walked into the Tuscaloosa area and started painting, um, you know, 
painting, putting down f uh, flooring, all these different jobs that I don't think any of us knew we could really do. And to be able to see us all come together and really help people in homes, building homes, um, you know, organizing different debris and stuff was really awesome. The biggest thing we'll probably take away from that whole trip though is how unbelievably selfless the people that we were helping were. Here they are, they have nothing. They've had everything taken from them and everywhere we went people were gracious, thankful, giving of themselves and so appreciative of the little bit of time we gave them to restore their community. I think when you look at the Grand Valley experience, it's about being a balance of what being a student athlete is, what being a student is on this beautiful campus, but also being able to experience what uh, community service is all about, to be able to expand your horizons and be able to um, just really understand there's much, much more than just being a student athlete here at Grand Valley and to be able to have a eye-opening experience in a different uh, community is very important for us as we continue to mold young ladies to understand life is much bigger than just the small little uh, community and the small atmosphere that you function in every single day.